Well, hello everyone. It's Angela with Mystic Moon bringing you guys your Divine Masculine weekly forecast. So this week's theme is called Haunted in the Moonlight. So I sat here this morning and really carved out today's reading with a bunch of different questions and, um, you know, selected the decks that I wanted to use. So all of the decks that I'll be using here today are created by myself and will be listed down below. And these particular organites are called the Twin Flame Divine Masculine and Divine Feminine Nudes created by Michelle from Wingham Bell. Now I do tend to channel for those that are experiencing either a separation or a challenge in their connection. So please keep that in mind. And I do things from the divine feminine's perspective. So we're looking in on your divine masculine here today, divine feminine. So let's go ahead and just dive right into this reading. You guys, we're going to do some of this reading here on this channel. And then um, at the end, we'll switch over to the extended version. So I will list everything down below that you need to know about today's reading, as well as what we're going to go into over on the extended and how to do all that over there. Okay. So let's get into it. The very first thing that we're going to focus on is you and I what keeps this love alive? So sometimes people are just kind of like, Hey, you know, what is keeping me connected here? What is this energy? Why does it seem like it never dies? Okay. What is this all about? So we are going to tap into a little bit of that question today. What keeps this love alive between you and your masculine? So this deck is called the divine love inspiration counterpart messages here. Let's see what keeps this love alive at this point. What is this energy? What keeps this life going and this love? We have merge. Our timelines are about ready to collide. Wow. Okay, so what spirit is immediately suggesting here is the reason that you're still connected to your divine masculine is because your timelines are going to uh, collide at some point. That's why. So it's not saying, you know, that you can't focus on anything else besides this divine masculine and this connection. It's just an energy that doesn't quit because there's some sort of a meeting. There's some sort of a connection that you guys are going, or you're supposed to connect at some point down the line for a particular reason. That's why. So there's a higher reason why you can't uh, seem to shake this connection and why the divine masculine can also not shake this connection. So let's go into my cosmic contracts, the ties that bind Oracle and see what else we need to know here. See what else we need to know about what keeps this love alive. So spirit is constantly, I feel showing you guys signs in order to keep you connected because your timelines are supposed to collide at some point. Okay, so we have soulmate. I am here to compliment your life. Now we're not labeling any connections here, but this is just because your souls are connected. You're here to compliment each other in this particular life. You guys are connected on a soul level. So there's this energy, of course, it's like a counterpart energy. It just doesn't go anywhere. It's not supposed to go anywhere. So let's go ahead and see what else. What else do we need to know here? Let's get another. This is my twin flame journey tarot. Why else is this love continuously alive? Let's get this energy. What is this? Okay, there's the divine masculine showing up here with the emperor vibe. We are going into, I believe, full moon in Aries uh, at the end of this week. It's the harvest moon. And so because the emperor is ruled by Aries, I feel like for some of you guys, this could be the timeline. There is something that happens very significantly, a huge shift that takes place. The masculine has some huge realization during that uh, full moon. Okay. So what keeps this love alive is that this masculine is making moves or is leveling up and you're feeling this divine feminine, you're feeling the ascension here that the masculine is going through. So it keeps you involved. It keeps you, I don't want to use the word hanging on, but it just keeps you aware of his presence, aware of his energy. That's what I'm getting here. It's very strong with that Aries vibe. Okay. So let's see what else is going on here. So the feminine feels the masculine on a very significant soul level right now because of the ascension that's taking place. And that's because something is about ready to merge. Now we also have dreams. 
So the dreams right now connect you and your masculine. So the thing is, you may um, just get busy with other things. You're, you're focusing on other things. There could be other mates in the situation. You know, there could be other um, relationships taking place while you're in a separation. Um, but there's this dream energy that keeps the two of you connected. So you, you may not even be really thinking about this masculine and he may not really be thinking about you on a daily basis, but somewhere you guys are back in, in the back of each other's minds. And so it pops up in the dream state. Okay. And you hear each other in your dream. So I feel like even if you are busy, it's like there's that constant soul connection, that reminder that the energy is there. So I'm not seeing that you guys want to forget about each other. It's just that when you get busy with other things, the energy just pops up. It's just there to constantly remind you of the presence of your counterpart. So it's coming through in the form of dreams, but I'm getting like things that you're hearing, like upon awakening, it's like you're in that twilight state. It's like, is it a dream? Did I just really hear those words at that kind of energy? Interesting. All right, let's see what else. We have sabotage. It says, I will make you want to give up. Interesting. <laughs> so there could be some things where, you know, it's been a very difficult separation, right? And almost feels like the impossible. It feels like, how is this ever going to work? How are our um, timelines going to merge? It might not even make logical sense to some of you. So there obviously is some fears and some things that are uh, currently playing out that both the masculine and the feminine are having to kind of address within themselves. This is this might even be someone that's sabotaging themselves, so that way they don't have to make a decision if there is a count, like another counterpart in the uh, mix. I just picked that up. Okay, there's a, a little bit of fear I feel. So what keeps this love alive? I feel like what keeps this love alive is the ups and downs. It's the constant connection. It's the constant awareness of your counterpart's presence. But then there's also this major fear of how is this ever going to work? So I feel like what it does is it pushes both of you to try harder, you know, to not give up, to keep fighting for this, actually, is what I'm seeing here. And I'm on the bottom of the deck. I do have a karmic person, so there could be karmic people karmic situations that seem like they're insurmountable. They seem like there's just, you know, no way that you can leave or your, um, your masculine can leave that situation. Seems like there's something that's sabotaging your connection constantly. So I feel like that's something as well that's in place in order to help you both to grow and to ascend and really reach higher. So it's almost like these karmic situations or people are in place to really test your strength, actually, to test your strength and to test your dedication to this path. Very interesting. All right, let's go ahead and get a tarot card here. Oh, wow. The world. The world is connected to the planet Saturn, and Saturn is all about hard lessons and burdens and karma. So it's very quite, it's, it's uh, very heavy. So cycle completion is the key word here. And this means that there is some sort of a wrapping up, I feel, of other situations, whether those are lessons, other relationships going on right now. I don't feel like everything is karmic though, because I got that soulmate energy. It might just be that there, there are karmic well, I don't like to use a lot of labels, but I am getting this karmic soulmate. It's a little bit harder. It's a little bit harder to, uh, to clear those connections. And the reason why is because it's not all bad. It's not all toxic, but there are some karmic undertones to that soulmate, um, that soulmate relationship or connection. So there are other key players and they don't have to be lovers. They could be family members or friends or even coworkers that are helping the both of you to reach for the stars, to reach higher for each other in this particular connection. It's very interesting. I feel like there's a settling and safe energy for someone. 
So what keeps this love alive is the both of you are inspirations to the other to keep reaching higher, to keep, to keep aiming higher for the stars, because what you're settling for right now may not be, um, it, it, it's like you deserve more. So you, the divine feminine deserves better and more. And so does this masculine. So if you guys are settling right now, there are other players in your life, key players in your life that are trying to kick that ladder out from under you in order to sabotage you in order for you to fight for it and, and to really try harder, if that makes sense. <laughs> so there are some key players that are trying to sabotage you in order to actually help you to grow. And so that way you know exactly what it is that you want. So I feel like it's not supposed to be easy. This love is not easy. This connection, this journey is not an easy one. Um, at least that's how it's coming through this week. And there are other people in the mix that are, like I said, essential in this karma clearing and this cycle completion so you guys can get to the next stage of your actual connection. Okay, so let's go ahead and get one more. Very interesting energy here. We have talented. Do you even know how amazing you are? So to me, this is kind of like a self-worth energy. It's like you're talented, you're gifted, you, you know, you, you have light in you, there's so much that you can accomplish in this life. Why are you settling? You have so many gifts to share. You know, there's a reason that this masculine and feminine are supposed to merge on this timeline and collide because I feel like maybe both of you have some sort of talent. There's some sort of a talent that you guys both have. And when you merge together and you share those talents with the world, it's like you guys are really living your purpose and your mission. And that's what spirit wants. But there are people along the way that will try to kick this out from under you. So it'll make it difficult for you to have this. It'll, it'll make it difficult for you to really obtain this in this lifetime. But it's supposed to be hard. Nothing, um, what's the word? Nothing ventured, nothing gained, right? You, you, it pushes you to go for it. It pushes you to try harder than you ever have before. So... What keeps this love alive is the challenge, <laughs> actually. That's what keeps this love alive is the challenge and the inspiration that you both lend to each other energetically to keep going. And we have passive. I won't tell you how I really feel. So there's also this mystery that keeps it alive as well. We don't really know. Okay. There is no communication. I feel for most of you, it's very difficult to know how the other feels because neither one of you are really opening up and saying it out loud. This is how I feel. So a lot of this connection, a lot of these, um, the communication and conversations are taking place telepathically or in your dreams. That's what I'm seeing here. All right, let's get one last tarot card on this. Yep, that's what I just said. There's something that's happening here. It's very mystery. <clears throat> so the mystery keeps this alive. The mystery, it's like the, of what could be. Um, it's, it's, like a, it's like a mystery that you want to solve. So it motivates you to want to dive deeper, the high priestess. But the high priestess is very secret and it's very hidden. It's very enigmat or enigmatic. It's very mysterious. It's, it's hidden, okay? So we can't quite figure it out. We can't quite prove it. It's something that we feel inside, but we can't quite prove it because from outer appearances, it might look like nothing is happening. It might look like there is no connection. But deep down inside, there really is something going on here. But it's happening behind the scenes. And it may be that it needs to happen behind the scenes because there could be other people. So I do feel guided this week to do a third party um, reading. Now, I know not everybody is in a third party, so that's not going to resonate for everybody. But I'm going to bring that to the collective this week. Last time I did it, a lot of people um, found it to be very helpful. So I feel guided now because of today's reading to do some sort of a third party uh, type of, of uh, reading here. So thank you, Spirit, for confirming that for me because I was just, I was thinking about it, doing one soon, but this is the week. So 
What keeps this love alive is that it's such a mystery. What keeps this love alive is that there's somehow this feeling that you would be better together than apart, okay? That you would combine your gifts and really shine brighter together. Now, that doesn't mean you can't shine by yourself, but energetically, you guys are always really with each other anyway, so you aren't really alone, if that makes sense. There's just a physical separation. Also, what we're not saying, what we're kind of keeping to ourselves, it it uh, amplifies this energy, actually. It makes it more sacred. It makes it more sacred because we're not saying it out loud. It's something that we're containing within ourselves. It's very special and sacred is what I'm getting here. And uh, that's what keeps this love alive. So it's that knowing that we need to try harder, knowing that other people are in our lives to compliment us, but also to really push us to grow and to aim higher. And that if we're being passive in this life, it is about trying harder. So there's a bit of a challenge with this whole entire connection. There's a challenge with being together. There's a challenge perhaps with other people. There's a challenge with communication and closure of karmic cycles. But it's all about becoming the emperor, which is taking back your power, sitting in your power. And I just feel like there's a huge shift that's actually coming with this full moon in Aries that's going to be happening this week. So very interesting. All right. Now we're going to take a look at my beloved, which is how this divine masculine is currently holding his divine feminine's energy and memory at this time. So what does that look like? What is the divine masculine's? Let's see here. The divine masculine's energy towards this feminine. How is he currently holding his divine feminine's energy and memory? So, of course, we're going to go into the divine masculine tarot. We're going to look at the spirits of darkness and light divination deck and one of my newest decks called Love Never Dies. All right, let's get into it. What is this energy here? How is this divine masculine currently holding his divine feminine's memory and energy? Okay, so we have Spirit of the Cross. So the fact that we just got the world energy and I was talking about burden, lessons, hardship, the cross to me is like Saturn's energy for sure. So basically this connection is uh, difficult. You know, I was picking that up already. And that's one of the things that keeps this alive is that the interaction of this connection, it really puts a challenge on things, but it, it pushes us to try harder. It pushes us to grow, to ascend, to reach for the stars. It pushes us to fight. So that's really what keeps this love alive is that you guys are inspired to keep fighting for it. And it almost seems impossible for many reasons, but it's also, it keeps it alive. It keeps you motivated in life. It keeps you inspired. This goes both ways, you guys. All right. Let's see what else. I never meant to hurt you. Okay. So how this masculine currently is holding the the feminine's uh, memory as well as energy right now is that he is bearing some sort of cross, which is a bur like a burden of shame. It's a hardship of shame. Maybe this particular masculine in the past acted a little sadistically and it seemed like he was not sorry for the things that maybe occurred, but it says, I never meant to hurt you. So this masculine is bearing this cross of shame is what I'm seeing here. Okay. That seems to be what that is. And we have diving deep within Ace of Cups. I feel like also he has d like uh, dove deep within himself, okay? He's gone deep within his own cup to figure out why he did what he did, why he acted the way that he acted, you know, has taken some sort of personal inventory in his own cup of love. So I feel like his 
energy towards this feminine currently is that if he ended up losing her or things have ended in some way, or you guys have are obviously now in some sort of a situation where there might be other people involved or there is no contact and a separation, it's almost like that is the burden of the behavior. That's the burden. Um, that's like kind of the karma that has been endured from this situation. And just really push this masculine to go within himself. So he kind of looks at this feminine as an inspiration for his own healing. I like that. All right, what else? Okay, so this immediately just wanted to pop through, so I will take it. We have spirit of armor. Okay, so what I'm also getting here is that this fem or that this masculine feels like perhaps that the feminine is a little guarded when it comes now to dealing with him. He feels that maybe she has put some sort of protective armor around herself. Now, we kind of see already that there's not a lot of communication happening. So it's like, you know, we don't exactly know how the other person feels. We just kind of go deeply with, our, with it ourselves and we just rely on our intuition to tell us. We rely on the telepathy, the, the, the dreams to tell us how the other person might be feeling. So, but on some level, this masculine does feel like this feminine feels, um, unsafe around him because of the sadistic behavior in the past. There is something here that, that stops her from maybe contacting him or, or maybe picking up the phone to respond to something. That's the burden. That's the karma I keep getting. And snowfall, these storms have blown me back to you. So the storm that you guys, whatever, however it was created, okay? The storm, the snow fell. Uh, and, and it's like the storm created this major issue or separation. But what it's done though, is that it pushed the masculine deep within himself and it's blowing him back to the feminine. So he's coming full circle. I feel like that's why the world was here. We're coming full circle with something. We're, we're understanding something because the fool starts the journey, right? And goes through the entire, um, all the archetypes of the major, um, ar arcana and basically learns a thing or two about themselves throughout that process. And so the world is the last card in tarot. And basically we are ready to, um, open up a new door because we've gone through so much. We've learned so much. So I feel like that's essentially what has happened here with this masculine is that maybe he had to go through a thing or two on his own in order to figure out who he was. And then now that he's gone through something, now he's come full circle with this realization of who his feminine truly is to him and what he wants. <clears throat> three of cups. So we do have this element for some of you guys that we are spending time with other people. So even though we, we are spending time with other people, and again, I just want to reiterate, it does not have to be lovers. Okay. Spending time with other people could be working. So coworkers, family members, friends, but this could be third party situations for those of you that these messages apply to. But even though we're spending time with others, even though we might be busy with other things, the memory, the energy of each other is always there. So we, we're not able to forget. And I'm getting here, we're not supposed to. There's no reason that we need to forget this person. Now, do we want to put our lives on hold? And do we want to um, not participate in other things because of this connection? No, absolutely not. We want to continue to thrive. We want to continue to put our best foot forward. Absolutely. So if this connection is causing you to lose sleep, it's causing you to feel like you can't move on with your life. You can't be happy unless you're with this particular divine masculine. I feel like that could be a sign that you do, you've got to do some sort of inner work and healing within yourself be, to be able to detach in a healthy way, you know? <clears throat> so to me, this is like both people are connected on a soul level, but they're still a, they're still participating in other areas or even other relationships right now. <clears throat> and that's good because we do know that these other relationships that you guys are experiencing are partners that are helping you both to grow and ascend, which is why they are important as well. So that's very interesting. So even though masculine might be spending time with other people, things still point back to his feminine. Okay. And I also feel like he wishes that they could reconcile. He wishes that they could spend time together. 
Okay. But he does feel this wall, this guarded energy with this feminine that maybe she does not trust this masculine. So that's a little bit of a burden that he carries is what I'm seeing. <clears throat> Spirit of the cat, fanciful, curious, and independent. So the cat's energy is here. So how does this relate to the feminine? I mean, he definitely fancies the feminine, that's for sure. He still fancies her. He's very curious about her. He wants to know, you know, what she's up to, what she's doing. It could be that he sees her as being very independent, very strong, um, you know, just doing really well, like boss like energy. Okay. So he sees her. So he could be watching her on social media. He could be inquiring about her, or this is just something that he just knows. You're the reason I keep pushing forward. This already came through descent. So it doesn't matter like how far this masculine has descended, like into his own shadow or just the shadows. He you are the reason, feminine, that he keeps pushing forward, that he keeps trying harder. And that's a theme that's already come through this reading here. Both of you guys keep pushing, pushing forward because of each other. So you motivate one, one another to keep trying harder. Yep, it's always been you, Ten of Cups. So this is basically pointing back to you, feminine. It's always been you. So even if the masculine lost himself, lost sight of this connection for a while, now, no matter how far he descended into whatever darkness or away from you, feminine, it's always actually been you at the end of the day, but it's taken him time to realize this. He's had to go through certain things before he could truly um, accept that fact is what I'm getting here. And we have spirit of the pumpkin, autumn. Interesting. So this is current. We just literally went into autumn. And if you're on the other side of the world, just current season, it's right now. Okay. This could be a special time of year as well for your connection for some reason. So it really reminds your masculine of your connection with you, feminine, during this period of time. But we have midnight. So it's like the witching hour in the middle of the night, wakes up in the middle of the night and has you on his mind. Evermore, we're like two strangers turning to dust. So this to me is a perhaps a long um, separation. You know, it's kind of like it might have been like now it's like we're two strangers. Like, you know, do we even, it's been so long, kind of like, do we even know each other anymore? Well, you do. And it's like turning to dust. Are we just going to turn to dust? Are we just going to leave this planet before we ever reconnect? There's that feeling here. There's definitely that feeling. Everything is crumbling down, the tower's energy. Yeah, so the masculine has a little bit of fear that um, this, this connection or that too much time is going to go on to where there's going to be a loss forever, that you guys are going to actually physically leave this world without ever reconnecting. So there's that fear that this masculine holds for sure. And we have spirit of the apple. We have test, offer, and temptation. So this masculine might be tempted right now to make contact with this feminine to come forward and offer her something. Now, there could be something that's holding him back. If there is third party here, I feel like that's probably one of the main reasons why. Okay, he might not be doing that. Longing for a home I used to know. So the masculine definitely, his spirit dwells in like this home with his feminine. So his spirit is dwelling where the feminine is. You know, he dwells with her in this home that they share together and this love that they both have together. So the spirit is dwelling here for sure. Mm -hmm. And we have lovers. Is this real or am I, am I imagining it? Masculine constantly feels this connection with the feminine, with that lover's energy, constantly feels her spirit as well, constantly feels this connection to her. But, you know, it does cause him those fears. It does cause him to ask himself, is this real or am I just imagining it? Because in this other realm, the, he's so sure. And this other realm, he feels this so intensely. He, he knows what this is. But upon awakening and dealing with the everyday world, things start to diminish and he starts to question 
okay? Starts to question whether or not this is something that can truly ever be in the physical world. So that's, remember that sabotaging energy that came through earlier? There are definitely some challenges. There's challenges as to, I, I will make you want to give up. There, there is this energy that's present that feels impossible. It feels like, how can, how can I do this? How can I make this happen? How can I turn this into a reality? So this energy is here for some reason. There seems like something is working against this connection. And I just feel like it's circumstances of our own fears as well as karmic relationships or other partners that could be involved. Okay. But the masculine is tempted to do something, to make a choice. And I feel like that choice right now is in his heart. If he could make a choice right now based on his feelings, he would make this choice to be with this feminine. So that might be something that you guys need to know this week. So let's now take a look and see the ghostly whispers. What words of yours are currently lingering in this divine masculine's mind? So how are you popping up in his energy field? What is he hearing when he is in that dream world, dream state, that psychic state where he is telepathically picking up your communication, feminine. Let's look at this. This is my divine feminine ghosted deck. What is this masculine picking up on? What words of yours are lingering in his mind, feminine? We have love the way you lie. That's all right because I like the way it hurts. Interesting. <laughs> okay. So there is definitely this feeling, of course, this song is kind of like a to toxic, toxic energy. Love the way you lie. It's almost like this masculine is picking up on the fact that this feminine, she, she's not saying something to him and he's not saying something to her. And, and there is this pain I feel between the two of you. There's this inner knowingness that you guys both know that the other person cares, but you can't say it. So it's almost like in a way, I like the way that it hurts. You know, of course you don't want to be in pain, but there is this energy that he's picking up on that he knows that you're, he knows that you're not being honest. He knows that you're not telling him how you really feel. He knows that you have this armor. He knows that you, he knows that it hurts and he knows that you're perhaps still hanging on to some sort of pain that he caused you. So for whatever, whatever you're sending, whatever you're thinking, whatever you're feeling, this is what the masculine is picking up on feminine. That's what I'm getting. Okay. So let's go ahead and go into my divine feminine healing oracle. See what else he's picking up. Yeah, we have confusion. Okay. And he's confused. Okay. Feminine, it, this is gray territory. So it's not totally dark and it's not totally light. It's kind of gray. And that's why we have the word confusion. Your energy confuses this masculine because sometimes he's picking up on the fact that you like something and then other times he's picking up on your pain. That's what I'm getting here. And so what's going on here? says, I take responsibility for my own decisions that contributed to cha challenging situations. There are times I feel feminine when you have forgiven this masculine and that you're sending a lot of love and understanding, like a lot of unconditional love his way. And there might be other times where you become triggered by your own fears, by, by your own traumas still that could be existing here or even through another connection perhaps. And it brings things up that you once went through with this masculine. So he feels this gray energy. So I feel like he's feeling a little bit of everything. He's feeling some of the light, but he's also feeling some of the dark too. So it puts him in a little bit of this state where he's not quite sure where you're at. And we did see energy wise, what, how he connects with you is in that guarded shield armor energy. Okay. Maybe still feels like you don't trust him. Oh, interesting. Imp of sorrow, which is the page of cups, crocodile tears. If, first of all, if you have shed tears over this masculine, he has felt your pain. Absolutely has felt your pain feminine. Okay. He knows that he hurts you. That's why that sadist energy was here. I never meant to hurt you, but we have crocodile tears. He has some sort of fear 
that if he were to come towards you and apologize, it, you may not know just how sorry he, he is. Because crocodile tears, it's like fake apology. Would you really take this apology? Would you really know deep down just how sorry he was for the way that maybe he lied to you? Because love the way you lie, there could be a lie. There could have, could have been a lie that really created a lot of heartache here. This could have been the demise of this connection because she is in a cemetery. So this, that could be the, the cross that we see in the background. That could be the burden is a lie, a lie that was told, a lie that was found out has really created a lot of burden burden and restriction for this connection to ever trust it again, to ever give it a chance or to even put communication out there um, again. So just take that as it resonates. Lullabies. I see you in all the pieces of my life. Absolutely. Oh God, I love that song. I forget who sings it, but it's such a pretty song. So basically, this is about the, the feminine, I'm sorry, this is about the masculine picking up on the feminine, all the pieces that he sees, he sees the feminine and all the pieces of his life, okay? So what I'm getting feminine is that your energy is all around the masculine, okay? What you're seeing, he's seeing, that's what it is. Lullabies also is about songs. So you're communicating to him through song, and he's picking up those lyrics or he's really listening to those lyrics and he's applying those to your feelings, feminine. Yep. We have behavior. Okay, so I will not engage in behaviors that don't align with my values and belief system. When I do this, no one benefits. The uh, masculine also feels that the feminine um, has put up her armor here. Okay. She has disengaged from the behavior of this masculine. So this is also about him sensing that this feminine has put up some boundaries with him, that she has, you know, noticed some sort of red flag and that she's not going to engage in this behavior. So he feels like she has, is honoring herself, that she has put value on herself, that she is not going to just, um, let him behave in the way that he used to. That's not going to fly. So he knows basically the feminine is in a, she's taking a stance that's a little bit different than where they were at before. So he does feel the upgrade in her energy is what I'm getting with that one. Yep. You're the queen of wands now. Okay. We do have scorned energy. So this just means here you've learned from the masculine's past behavior and you're, you're not interested feminine and in ever dealing with that again. You're not interested in a masculine who's going to lie to you. And he knows this. He knows that he burned you. He knows he hurt you. And so this just means that if he's going to engage with you again, he needs to be damn sure that he is not going to engage in that behavior. So if there is a third party here, it's not going to be for everybody. That might be one of the biggest holdbacks here or one of the biggest drawbacks of coming forward. Because if we come forward to that energy, technically there is deception, whether it's on his part, your part, or both. Now, if there is no third party here, I just feel like the biggest, um, the biggest holdup here is because of a lie and because of how much he scorned you or how much he feels like you might still be scorned by what happened. Okay. The queen of wands is extremely intimidating. You guys, when it comes to this particular deck, she ain't somebody, you're, you're sorry you messed with her because you're afraid that now she's going to burn you, okay, because she's so scorned. There's a fear and intimidation here. Yeah, karma's a bitch. Oh my gosh. What comes around goes around. Whew. So what the masculine is picking up on feminine is that uh, <laughs> he, first of all, he's experienced some sort of karma for his past behavior. And the thing is, when he got this karma, he thought about you, feminine. He almost, in a way, felt like maybe you put some sort of a spell on him. Not really, but I did pick that, pick that up in last week's reading. He actually felt like, oh, God, I deserve that because of what I did. Serves me right. That's what I'm getting here. He actually thought to himself, serves me right for what I did to, to you. Uh-huh. And we have waiting. Oh, wow. He, he picks up on this energy feminine that not that you're waiting around for him, but that you've been waiting for karma to find him. So he would wake up and realize exactly what he did to you. 
So he feels your, your presence around him. The high priestess is also about like an all knowing. So he does feel like you're the high priestess of his, in, in his life. Somebody that just knows what's going on. Somebody that just knows what's happening here. But this is talking about, I'm not waiting for you to change. I make my own destiny. So he doesn't feel feminine that you've just been sitting around waiting for him. Okay. But what comes around goes around. So he feels your energy that you've been waiting for him to wake up, but that ne not, not necessarily that you're waiting around for him. You're the queen of wands. You're still living your life. You're still doing your thing. And he knows that. Yeah. And we have the six of pentacles taken for granted. So it's about because he took you for granted, he lost something. It's almost like his vision of you or his inner knowingness of you or the energy that you're sending his way is that you're like, you got yours finally. You took me for granted. Now you're realizing what life is like without me. Maybe you need to sit in that energy for a little bit. Maybe you need to wait now for me to come back around because you took me for granted and I'm not going to just be that easy or that that easily swayed by either, either like an apology or just because I've heard that shit's fallen, like crumbled around for you, that you've had a tower moment, that I'm just going to come back into your life and pick up all the pieces. So there's some sort of an energy here where it's kind of like you got what you deserved. Masculine feels this energy from the feminine, knows that she knows something about his life, but that she's not coming forward, that he's going to have to make the move because she was taken advantage of or for granted in the past, and she's not going to go down that road again. Interesting. So if this is resonating with you guys this week, this particular story, I invite you guys to come and join me over on the extended reading. I'll put that link down below. And what we're going to go into over there, you guys, is we're going to see how uh, the moonlight dance. So how do they feel your present at night when they're all alone? So what exactly does that energy look like? We're going to look at the confessional, which is what piece of their heart do you still currently hold? Also sacrifice, what are they willing to do in order to change things around between the two of you? And then lastly, bodies collide. How will the stars begin to align in this connection moving forward? So if that sounds like your sort of thing, go ahead and join me over there. And thank you guys so much for choosing to watch this reading. I will catch you guys next time. Take care. Bye-bye.